We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G.
how Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? You can get a grant to help. We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. It's easy. Sastel has already given away tens of thousands of dollars. Chance now for the Clyburn team to try to come around. Trailing by two here, but uh, with last rock in the third end. Staggered guard, they are center guards, not what they'd like to be playing with, but uh, it is something to work with. And you can't peel those guards yet. Eichert now looking to come around from the intern side. So he can bury around those two staggered center guards and also perhaps get around that redstone that was just delivered. Use it as kind of a third guard for now.
that come around. And choice now for the Clybrink team. It's fifth rocks done, so they can start peeling those guards, try to open things up in the middle. The Clyburn team opened up with a win last night. They had a, a tough loss this afternoon and have been playing shorthanded. The Laycock team played uh, in the opening draw yesterday and this is their first time on the ice since that time. And I, I, I wasn't calling that game, but I think I caught the tail end of it. I think they actually played their first game shorthanded too. Braden Stewart wasn't, uh, wasn't available, but he's here now. Seikert looking to guard that situation in the middle. Actually, you get a little extra curl now. He's got nice weight, but uh, this is going to have to finish a bit to cover those stones. Good job by the brushers. Brings it in line. Kyler Glybrink perhaps eyeing up the run through. Good straight peel, too. Not a lot of distance between them. The blue onto the red onto the blue. That's what they've settled on. Well, this is Dustin Kaltoff. New to the squad this year. Longtime Saskatchewan curler. Curling is the import on this Alberta foursome this year. Makes the hit on the guard, drives it by the stone at the top of the 12 foot, rolls the shooter out of play. Always confusing for the commentator when you got one team thrown with three players. This is uh, third stones now. John Meacham. Looking for the tight guard there. This is going to come in and it actually corner freezes the redstone. I'm not sure whether they get away with that or not. It's hard to tell from this angle. Those two stones are very close together. It should drag a bit. I don't know whether you'll get the stone in the top of the eight foot or not. Apologize to the viewers at home. Uh, we did have some audio problems. I hope you can hear me now, and I'll, I'll warn you if you can hear the players. I can't. So if he he did identify whether or not this would drag enough, I I can't hear him. First things first. You'd like to get the hit and roll. It's going to be a little thin on the first one, but we'll hang on to the back of the 12 foot. Looks like that might be fourth shot for now. Blue stone that he hit stayed in the rings in there. Somebody must have told Steve I can't hear, so he pointed. That's awful nice of him. Still tough for uh, Steve Laycock to make a play on any of the reds without leaving some kind of double around. Or losing the shooter, one or the other. Could play that guard one more time, but when you start to have some reds piling up, uh, I don't think he's comfortable leaving two of them in the rings. Well, makes the hit, but jams it onto the bluestone, rolls it over behind the corner guard, and that is now shot rock. Belonging to Kyle Clybrink. And 
looking to hit and roll off the stone at the top of the 12 foot. They could perhaps after this one be sitting sitting two and fourth shot. That one blue stone over on the left side as we look facing the house would start to be pretty lonely. Early switch on the sweep here. This is really going to have to curl. Boy, good job by the sweeper to get that to carve over. Catches enough of that stone to push it through the back. The shooter rolls over to the edge of the 12. Hard to say from here who's second shot. Could be the red. There's probably enough of a port there that uh, Steve Laycock could attempt the double through the through the open port. This is one of those types of shots where if you actually make the port, you've got the double. Waiting for this to curl oh, through the oh. port. He's close. Between the two of them, catches the two reds. Rolls over and nobody really paying attention to the stone coming off the boards and it double clicks. And so now the two teams will have to make a decision as to where that where they feel that stone would have stopped. Actually, it looks like the only one they moved was the red. So maybe the only one it double clicked was coming back off the red. Coming back off the boards and caught the red. Got it settled where those stones should be now. And I think it might actually be the red sitting second shot. So a chance here for Tyler Fibrink to hit and sit for two. to get to the inside of the nose here if he's going to roll into sit second shot. This is hanging on him just a little bit. Makes the hit, stays right there. Everybody's going to have to look around the outside and if they don't point, I can't tell you who shot. I, I think the stone that Kyler just delivered is third for sure. see there just from the overhead you can catch a little bit of a view of those two stones Jerry by the Saskatchewan Curling Stadium logo boy from that view I almost think it might be the uh, the blue stone that shot rock doesn't really change the shot here for for Steve Laycock he's going to come around the corner guard try to get his force that way I guess if you were absolutely positive you were shot rock, you might draw to the open side.
Jones can they get it in? Shot Rock can get a piece around cover. If they can drag it far enough back, they should bury a piece. Well, not a big piece, but probably enough. There's not any kind of double available. This is where it really matters whether you think your shot rock or, or pardon me, second shot on the side or not. Tyler Clybrink talking about can we, I think, looking at whether or not he can get by with enough to pass it by the stones at the back, perhaps get through that way. Does he play the run back, try to stick it and get his deuce that way? Looks like they've settled on the run back. way to play it but if you ever hit this just perfectly almost straight back maybe just a little bit just a sliver low catch that blue stone thin bring the ray stone across and make the double on the blues you might even be able to get three right now they'd be happy to just run it back and stick it he's close makes the run catches the first stone Goes across the top of the third one. And I think it's another steal of one for Steve Laycock. That'll give him a score of three to nothing as they go into the fourth. Tyler Clybrink continuing to have last rock. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's gonna make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. Welcome back, Sean Joyce here with you live from the Thrilling Stadium, Martinsville International. Fourth end action. We thought perhaps we'd steal a one if we went to the break. It turns out that Tyler Clyburn did just need to, to stick that. Would have had a chance for two as it, with the rollout. He only gets the single point, but closes the score to two to one. And it is now Steve Laycock with Last Rock as we begin playing the fourth. Didn't see the call there. I have to believe they were trying to put up the center guard. That slides a little too far, and when it does, also overcurls the center line. So that comes to rest in the eight foot. And Steve Laycock will ask Braden Stewart to make the hit on that stone. Nick 
course, the hit rolls over a little bit towards the center line. You might see a, a bit of an exchange of stones now. It's probably a little early in the game for the uh, hybrid team to go all out to try to steal in an even end. Only down by one. The hit rolls over to the corner of the 12 foot now with the play off the center line. And in the 12 foot, Steve Lakoff will take advantage of the opportunity to throw one corner guard that uh, will still be in the free guard zone for one more rock. Concerned about not letting a chance for two set up here. He's going to throw the center guard for now. Chris Kennedy, normally the lead, or pardon me, normally the second for this team, but they are playing shorthanded. Attempt at the center guard. Overcurls the center again just a little bit, but it is a good guard. Steve Laycock will make an attempt on the stone in the corner of the 12 foot now. New line up here for the Lake Hawk team. Of Steve played out of the province with uh, Jim Cogger for a number of years. Last year was playing as kind of the fifth man with Ryland Clayter's team. And Ryland still uh, involved in football with the Hilltop program and was, was away a lot, so Steve got to play quite a bit. Sean Meacham and uh, Braden Stewart have played together for a few years, and Sean and, and Chris, both in the Swift Current area, have played mixed together. Of course, many, many moons ago, Sykert playing with Steve Laycock, winning a, a World Junior title. So these guys all know each other quite well, just haven't had a chance to play together in this configuration until this season. With the rollout, Dustin Kaltoff, chance to play the come around. this afternoon I was talking about it then as well Dustin uh, an accomplished doubles player so <laughs> even though this team playing with three players they still get two sweepers because he's quite used to jumping up to his own rocks buries that one nicely at the top of the forefoot Steve Blakeock now will just ask Chris Hiker to remove the center guard Keltoff being asked to put it back. A little bit of sweep on the offside now, trying to get a little bit more curl. Has to finish to cover that stone in the rings. 
cover half of it. Steve looked at it a little bit, but I didn't see any indication. I th think he's just playing the straight peel here. There is a little bit of an angle. He could uh, go after the run through and roll over. Looks like they played it as a straight peel all the way. Makes the hit, rolls the shooter across. Does hang on at the edge of the sheet, but uh, not covering much. One more time now for Dustin Keltoff. Try to cover up that stone. early brush on this one. Now trying to bring it for that last little bit of curl. Put it in almost the exact same spot as the last one. So another attempt for Sean Meacham to simply peel the guard. across and nudges the stone that he threw on the first one, but uh, doesn't push it into the rings. Skip stones now. Kyler Clybrink with his first, and he'll be attempting to put that guard back one more time. closer to the center line a lot earlier than uh, Dustin did. This rock might be a little bit higher, so he'll get away with that. Shouldn't overcurl. Oh, he's got it perfectly in line. And that's a nice one for uh, Kyler because now he's got that line so good in his head. If he comes down to his last shot and has that same chance again, he'd feel confident guarding it. Of course, Steve Laycock knows that that if you just peel the guard here, you're going to be looking at trying to draw to the button. He's going to play some kind of draw here, see if he can nudge that red stone. The guard is a little bit higher, and from what we've seen so far this week, there's plenty of curl from the hog line in. You can probably throw back 8 back 12 here and uh, get pretty close to the face of that red stone. Picking it up early. This looks like he might have been a little bit tight. They're going to have to go to get by that red guard. Both brushers on it. Not going to get by now. He's even going to roll off. Boy, I think in addition to being perhaps a little bit inside, definitely light. And now a chance perhaps for Tyler Clybrink to set up a steal. Keltoff looking to see if there's, and there's probably room to come through the port and make a play on shot stone, but I don't think you could make it and roll out if you bring another rock into the rings here where Kyler's looking at it, just kind of corner freeze your own. I don't think you can get to that stone. He can also make the draw tough by getting to the top four foot here. You'd have to go out wider, and that brings that corner guard into your line of sight for Steve Laycock. 
big opportunity here. As I said, these guys uh, came off the ice this afternoon in a game against Colton Flash and the Flash Force and was absolutely dominant. They uh, had Last Rock to start the game and had the Clyburn team under pressure the whole game. So they're looking for a, a bounce back here. This is a big opportunity in this fourth end. Looking to draw, sit two. Nothing out of the brush so far. Can't bounce off here. Certainly doesn't want to be behind the D-line either. Gets a little nudge, sits right there. And I think that gets away with it. Certainly Steve Laycock can't make a play on that stone and get shot rock. Dangerously close to sliding just a little too far there for Kyler Clybrink. If that rub's just a little bit thinner or a little bit harder, rolls open. Steve Laycock has a shot here to get out of this. As it is, looks like he's going to make a play on the stone that was just delivered. And I think that really has to concede a steal of one. I don't see any way he can roll in unless he thinks he can hit this thin enough to perhaps make the double. That'd be tough. It's probably just there. double you have to drive the first one very close to straight sideways so you're looking at hitting the first one very thin you'd, you'd flirt with missing it all together and I don't know that you want to take that chance yep. Steve Lakeock final stone here in the fourth end leading by one but facing two they were on this right away. He's going to be tight to the guard again and rubs the guard. So it will be a steal of two for Kyler Glybrick, and he jumps out to a 3-2 lead after the fourth end. It'll be Steve Laycock once again with Last Rock when we come back for the fifth. Sastel Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? you can get a grant to help. We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. It's easy. Sastel has already given away tens of thousands of dollars. There have been lots of great ideas, including kids giving cookies to others, a group set up to welcome newcomers to their school, random acts of kindness, and so much more. The ideas and opportunities are endless. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. characteristic miss a couple of misses actually by Steve Laycock with his two stones in the fourth end rubbing guards both times gives up the steal of two and the vibrant team now with the lead for the first time in the game looking to play the tight center guard here ten teams in the field in the men's event Sastel will make the playoffs. We've got five games in the preliminary round. So you would think three and two really has to be the cutoff. And you might be looking at tiebreakers at three and two to get into the top five. The Clybrink team comes in with a record of one and one. Steve Laycock, this is just his second game, having played in the opening draw. In your mind, you've always got to be thinking it's not just a matter of make the playoffs because if you happen to sit in the fourth and fifth place in this format, you play the quarterfinal. If you can finish in the top three, you go straight through to the semifinals, which is a nice little added bonus, especially early in the season. Braden Stewart looking for the come around there, comes up a little bit short of the rings. That acts as a center guard. They won't be happy with that.
So a chance now for Chris Kennedy to come around those two stones. room by the guard but we know these will curl from the hog line in there you can see it boy that came by the guard by over a foot and it is dead buried in fact if the blue one wasn't there it would have come out a couple of inches out the open side Free guard zone still in effect here, so it can't make a play on the guards. Braden Stewart will look to follow that stone down, sit on the corner of it. That's good. A little light with his in-turn draw on the first one. This is the out-turn. Yep. Line, if anything, looks a little bit tighter than uh, Chris Kennedy had. Definitely tighter by the first guard. May not get by the second one. Comes to rest in the 12 foot, sitting second shot. Clyde Brink's first thought was to come around again from the other side. It's a comment from the hack, and I think they're a little bit worried about the positioning of that blue stone that might be able to be tapped up. have to believe no matter what you do here, Steve Laycock's going to start peeling guards. It looks like they went back to the, I thought it looked like they were going back to the first call. He went back to the first ice anyway. It does look like this might be an attempt at a guard though. job of blocking that uh, blue stone at the top 12. Probably there if you wanted to make a draw weight tap, but uh, Steve Laycock is going to start peeling guards now. Looking to get uh, two red ones moving here, and if you hit it just right, you might uh, bring it back into that blue stone at the top 12 foot. And, boy, you could get four rocks wired here if you hit it just right. One, two, three, four, and all the red ones pretty much out of play. Did leave the one over on the side of the sheet. That's a good way to flip the script on an end. Dustin Kaltoff now in the hacks looking to make the straight run back. Wants to kill the two blues. Important to keep a shooter right there. It's going to overthrow just a little bit, though. Feels the center guard, but his shooter's going to roll out of play. Now the only guard left is the long corner guard belonging to Steve Laycock. He's sitting one already. A chance to try to use that corner guard. with the big weight run back on his first one needed to bring the weight back for the draw attempt here on the second stone a little bit light rubs the guard and uh, also ends up with his shooter as a, as a center guard albeit a very long one on this ice you can come around that with enough weight to kill a stone and probably still get to the face but it is something for Kyler Clybrink to work with 
Dustin Keltoff will look to make that play on shot stone. This is where the players at this level are just, uh, they're not just content to make that hit. He'd, he'd love to stay behind cover here. And that shows you just how hard it curls. It actually came out past the guard. Maybe a little lighter than what they had in mind. They didn't actually kill the blue stone. For Steve Laycock, he doesn't really want to play around the center guard, but he can't roll to the corner without risking the jam on the back. So asking Sean Meacham to make the play on that red stone that was just delivered. And at least roll a piece behind the center guard. And by the guard now, will it finish enough to get the roll? Well, just enough to pass that stone by the one at the back, but the shooter stays open. It's Laycock sitting two. Other Clybrink taking a look at the double. looking at the hit and roll. Looks like they've opted for the double. Gonna throw real big weight at it here, so you might be able to make the double and roll behind the corner guard. Gonna have to throw a little bit if he's gonna stay. Makes the hit, actually a little too thin on the first one, drives it all the way over the face of the stone at the back, 12 foot, and shooter rolls out as well, so it is still Steve Laycock sitting one. A chance now for Sean Meacham to play the come around. He's just cleaning. He's got lots of room by the guard, but we know it will finish. Boy, does it ever finish. He comes out half rock again past the guard. Clybrink going to look at the uh, double again, I think. stone's a little bit closer together now. If he hits the same piece this time, probably catches the second stone. Pressure was on it early by the guard. Catches the first one, catches the second one, but maybe a little solidly and doesn't get it out of the rings. Now he does hang his shooter on for Shot Rock behind the corner guard. Steve Laycock feeling there's room there to make a pass with that stone even though it's buried. And from everything we've seen so far this week, the shot's there. Of course, these shots are always a little bit more difficult than Kyler Clybrick. At least you, you made his shot tough here and that's what you want to do.
Steve Laycock with his first stone here in the fifth end of play. Facing one, he does have second shot at the back of the 12 foot. Looking to make a play on this stone. Doesn't actually have to get it completely out of the ring. If he moves it far enough to sit two, he'll be happy. Why are they going to get it by the front one? Well, great eye by Sean Meacham. Uh, they uh, certainly didn't pound that stone to get it by. He gets just by the front one, gets to the nose of the second one, and then the uh, red stone and pushes it just through the back. Sits two now. not content to play the same shot as he just witnessed. He's looking to play with a little bit more weight, make the play on shot stone and roll over towards the second shot. Of course, if you did make the exact same shot you just saw, you'd leave it again for Steve. I think Dustin Kaltoff wondering about the corner freeze. That seemed to be what he was indicating there. Good shot if you make it, tough shot. I think they've gone back to the first call, which is to, to play the hit. And uh, with that ice, I think they're playing to roll towards the one at the back of the 12 foot. Steve Laycock had just threw the house weight on his. You have to think uh, Tyler perhaps looking to throw maybe a, a board weight on this. Brush up early, now backed off. Still got to be tight to the guard. By the front one. Takes the hit, pushes it through the back, but gets no roll at all. So it'll leave the shot one more time for Steve Laycock. And he won't have to flirt with the guard quite so much this time. He's got all kinds of room to roll towards the middle. Gave up a deuce in the fourth, a chance to get it back right here in the fifth. Made the shot on his first one, needs to make it again here with his final stone. He can pick up two points and Restore the one-point lead. Looks like it was on the brush right away. Looks to have room by the guard. Now the question is, does he have enough weight to get it through the back? Just enough. Pushes it through the back. Stays buried. Picks up his two points. Steve Laycock. Back out to a 4-3 lead. When we come back to the sixth end, it'll be Kyler Clybrink with the last rock. We asked Saskatchewan what they know about 5G. Uh, more speed, more innovation. It's going to make our lives a whole heck of a lot easier. This is what 5G looks like. Better, faster. Sounds like one more G. Sounds pretty good. I don't know what it means. All you really need to know is the future of 5G is here and will continue improving through investments in network technology. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? You can get a grant to help. We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. It's easy. Sastel has already given away tens of thousands of dollars. There have been lots of great ideas, including kids giving cookies to others, a group set up to welcome newcomers to their school, random acts of kindness, and so much more. The ideas and opportunities are endless. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? Sastel can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference.
Sean Joyce here with you live from the Curling Stadium, Martinsville International. Day two action. This is draw six overall. Steve Laycock with a 4 3 lead as we begin play here in the sixth end. Kyler Clyburn with last rock. First stone comes to bite the top of the 12 foot allows the Glyburn team to make that hit you just saw and they leave their shooter outside of the free guard zone so Steve Laycock can't make a play on it. Green Stewart looking to throw the center guard here. Get a bit of an overlap with that red. Comes in his double staggered centers and see if he can't get something going here. He'd love to get a force. But not so much that he wants to risk giving up uh, two or three. And Kyler Glybrink, with last rock here in the even ends, wants to look for a, a chance to get two at least. Going to throw a corner guard here. all of these teams looking to make the top five in the 10 team field get to the playoff playoff round will all be held on Monday we'll have all those games for you and everything in between Steve Laycock now asking for the come around Chris Heikert looking to come around the tight blue center guard. They had to go to get it by, and when they do, it's going to slide a little bit deep. Comes to rest back eight foot. It is buried. indication from Tyler Clyburn just to try to follow that stone down but he'd like to stop in front of the tee line Keltoff picked the stone up early and, uh, and indicated it had lots of room yet. Switch is looking for extra curl, so he's got to be thinking this one's a little bit on the light side. He didn't want to get off of it. And good judgment there from Dustin Keltoff. Brings that all the way down, gets to the top of the forefoot. It is shot rock, and it is dead buried. This is shaping up to be an interesting end. Uh, a little bit of cat and mouse going on here. Steve Laycock doesn't want to let him blank with left of force. The Vibrant team looking like they're going all out to try and get at least two here. Even to the point of being willing to come around a center guard, a tight center guard, belonging to the other team. Chris Eichert not able to follow his first attempt just rubs the guard. That little rub on the guard too leaves the blue red at the top slightly overlapped. Oh, 
Dustin Kaltoff will look to make a play on the stone that just came into the rings. Wants to roll under cover here as well. Won't be second shot when he does that. He'll be sitting shot in third. This is a long ways out there yet. This is really going to have to curl. Comes enough to get to the inside and does make the roll. Well, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that the blank end's not happening. Steve Laycock looking at another corner freeze attempt. Well, you have to be careful with this. If you ever just nudge off a little bit, you might be able to leave, you might leave some kind of a double where you might be sitting three. So it's a delicate shot for Sean Meacham. Backed away a little bit now. It needs to curl a little bit more. Boy, this is going to be a good one. Well, nudges it a little bit. Steve Laycock thinking the same thing as I am. He went over to take a look. If you play blue onto red, does it go straight onto the blue at the back? It, it kind of looks like it goes over the top a little bit. wondering the same thing, probably looking at not playing with a big, big weight. So with that for him, you got to think they're playing it with kind of a draw weight. Might, might even be just trying to get to the nose of the blue stone and just sit on it. Maybe a hair high and line it up to play the tappity tappity tap on the next one. See if you can throw a couple of blues that way. It's all about getting the right angle on a shot like this. to the offside early, looking for some extra curl. Definitely wants to get close to the nose on the blue. Maybe a hair on the outside. Steve looking at it again. Is there a chance you could get to the inside of that red? Red on the blue. The blue comes back onto the red at the back forefoot. And your shooter rolls in behind like that. Can you get two blues out of there and sit three, or pardon me, two reds out of there and sit three? Sean Meacham wants to take a look at these angles. for the Laycock team is if you really wanted to go after the shot, the safest way to play it is with quiet weight. The problem with that is you maybe don't kill any of the redstones. And if you leave a chance at a double or a triple, those redstones are already starting to pile up. Sean Meacham from the hand signal I saw looks like he wants to throw it with big weight. And with that broom, I think that's what they've settled on. to get just a hair to the inside. Clip the blue on the way by. The blue will go into the red at the side of the forefoot. You 
I'd love to roll your shooter over at least a piece under the guard. Needs to come up just a little bit. It's close. Needed to curl just a hair more. He makes contact with the stone at the back, but first raised stone spins to the back of the 12 foot and the shooter stays in the open so it looks to be Laycock sitting two right now you make the double on the two blue stones and roll your shooter behind the corner far enough in to get a uh, second shot I'm not sure if you can get second shot out of it or not close. For now, you'd be happy if you made the double and roll buried, even if you're sitting shot in third shot. Steve Laycock won't have a clear path at either one of those stones. Three will still be in play. Always for bumper weight. Of course, really, you don't need to kill these two stones. You just need to get them out of the eight foot. The key here is to hold the shooter and ideally roll it behind the corner guard. Looking for some curl here. Really thin on the first one yet little too thin it's going to drive it by the one at the back and the shooter will roll out of play well that was not the way to miss that shot gives Steve Laycock the chance to come around we got three rocks over there that are staggered while they're close together it's hard to make even a, any kind of a double run back so if you bury around those it might take two two shots to get at uh, shot rock Big shot here for Steve Laycock, a chance to come around, sit two. More importantly, you can get into the four foot area behind three rocks and probably not enough time for Tyler Clybrink to, to really do much with it. And the two stones remaining for him. This is gonna come up short. Takes away any kind of draw path through the middle, but uh, well, actually, it overcurls enough at the end. There's probably still a port there. Tyler looking at the double tap on the reds. He could probably come around everything from the wide intern and, and make a play on the backstone. The problem with that is you'd be behind the T-line. What I'd be really worried about, and I think you see Dustin talking about it now, is if you leave Steve Lakoff that same draw, and yes, it's a little bit more difficult now, but the port's still there. He could come to the top of the button around you know, three guards out front and the one at the top of the eight foot. You're not going to get to it with your last stone. be wise to try to get there first and then uh, Steve tries to follow you and happens to rub you've got a shot on the back one for three You're looking at taps on the red the thing is you can't see all of that red stone if you make the double tap the stone you're tapping first is still sitting as fourth. You're never bringing it into count. You're still going to have a tough shot with your last one. And this is just about the toughest shot you could play.
hoping to have mics on these players tomorrow. Uh, I would dearly love to know what they're talking about right now. It looks to me like Kyler really wants to play the double tap, but I don't think he's got either of the other two convinced that they get as much out of this as he thinks. find out. I do think he, he's aware that uh, he probably can't see enough of it to tap dead onto the second one, so it's going to come across the face ever so slightly. Maybe he thinks he can spin it in get shot in the third shot that way. Leave himself a shot at the back one for three, perhaps. Well, he's going to have to go to the, by the blue, and it's not going to. Pushes it back, leaves it in play in the back 12 foot. I, I still think that was probably, I mean, if it was there, it was the toughest shot he had left. And I'm not sure it was going to ever leave you a chance for three. Steve Laycock was probably always playing this. the opportunity to make it first. If you make it first, you're, you're always going to have a shot for two. Steve Laycock has made a career out of making you pay for tactical errors. A little short on the draw on his first attempt. That's the center guard. He's trying to come around now. Nothing out of the brushers yet. Now looking for a little extra curl. He's got to get by the corner guard. And will not. Well, a chance now for uh, Fibrink. Make a play to that back stone. Can probably get it for two. Doesn't have to move it very far. And I think when they're pointing like that, probably talking about a shot from earlier in the game and the line as to, as to where they need to, to be with the broom here. Has to get by his own. You know these will curl at the end, but the other side of it is he's not going to have a lot of room to roll. The two blue stones at the back of the 12 foot, and it's hard to say. I think it's the one closer to the words the middle that's sitting third shot right now. Maybe just a sliver bite of the eight foot. So that means you've got maybe two feet to cur to, to roll at the most before you've you've only got a single. I think they might have switched gears here with where they're putting the broom now. It looks like they might be playing the angle slash. be at full strength here for the first time. I see two two bodies behind the hacks. Oh, pardon me, that's that's Kyler. I'm a little too far away. He's already made his way down to the hacks. Still talking it over with Chris. Boy, from the hacks, it's got to look like he's got a shot at that back one direct, but he's going to play the angle slash. the hit on the first one a little too thick drives it by the 
stone at the back all together, and it's going to be a steal of one. Steve Laycock will take a 5-3 lead now after six ends of play, and Kyler Clybrink will keep Last Rock into the seventh. Sean Joyce here with you from the Curling Stadium, Martinsville International. Seventh end action underway here on Friday evening. Steve Laycock with a steal of one in the sixth, looking to uh, perhaps pick up his second victory. Drops the stone just short of the rings, and uh, we'll see. Other Clyburn to try to play the corner guard here. Both of these teams newly formed this year. So I'm not sure if either one of them has had many chances to play or whether they've talked about how they want to play these scenarios. There are teams that if they were in the Clyburn situation right now would be content to blank seven and take their chances in eight. You you feel fairly confident you can score two with Last Rock, and if you ever get the chance for three, you could win it outright in eight, whereas if you score three and seven, Steve Laycock has Last Rock in eight. Neither one's wrong. It's just whichever one you're comfortable playing, and all of these teams have had a chance to, to figure out which uh, statistically works out the best for them. Blaycock doesn't have much to think about anyway. He's just going to play some defense here, get the rocks into the middle, forcing uh, Clybrink to deal with them eventually, and he'd be happy to see a single point go up on the board either way. Doesn't mind if Clybrink gets two. That would give him last rock coming home. Slight miscue there for the Laycock team as they throw the second guard really acts more as a corner. Either Clybrink thinking to try to use it right away. Would have the option here if he wanted to to try to throw another corner, tight corner behind his own. The only uh, risk you have here playing the come around now is that the two stones you're coming around are both blue. Steve Laycock can play a run back. Start eliminating rocks. Certainly I think if this was the eighth end you'd see them throw another corner. Brings it in to sit shot rock in the 12 foot. And now, because it is a blue guard onto the uh, red in the 12 foot, you can try the run back. If you straight peel it, that's not the end of the world. The other indication from Steve, try to roll this over back to that center line. That's where you wanted the second guard originally anyway. You could, could accomplish a couple of things here. 
Pressures are close. Needs to get just to the inside of the nose. Boy, they might have lost that one a little bit. No, he catches enough of it and going to drive it through the back. So makes the run through, rolls the guard over, so it's now two center guards. Clyde Brink will look to come around that, use the two slightly staggered blue guards in the center line area. Doesn't look like this is going to get by. Might have been a little bit light as well. Well, decision time now for Steve Laycock. There's a lot of guards out there to try to peel them all. And center line is really plugged up. You don't have last rock here. Why not come right around everything and put some pressure on here? Pressure's working hard on this one. Got plenty of room by the guard, but maybe he doesn't have quite the legs to get to the forefoot. Comes to rest, full 12, just about uh, fully open. That's not a bad spot for the Laycock team, though, because that stone is still usable and takes away the draw path. to get to the inside of that stone so looking at uh, hitting and rolling away or do you play the run on the red it looks like he's got room to get just to the inside of that red stone drive it back onto the shot stone might even be able to spill in behind cover Very close. Makes the hit. Actually will spill past the center guards and a bit of a bad break there. Stays right out in the open and creates a bit more of an overlap on the three center stones. Not sure what the discussion there is at the back. Well, I don't think anybody saw that stone to know whether it's still in play. It, it hit the divider. <laughs> and uh, I only know that because I got to watch the replay. But nobody was watching it. They were all watching the other stones. likely to come back into play back there. Steve Laycock going to make a play on shot stone and look to roll behind the three rocks in the center. Sean Meacham with his intern. This is going to need to curl if he's going to stay. Makes the hit, rolls across. We're going to get rid of that rock one more time now just for good measure. And now everybody saw it hit the divider. Now Dustin Kaltoff with the draw attempt. A lot of room by the guard. Both sweepers getting ready now to sweep for some extra curl. waited just a little bit too long, doesn't manage to make it to the rings at all. Now well, they were 
waiting for that stone to catch the break point naturally and then try to carve it a little extra and by the time they did that didn't have the legs to make the rings for Steve Laycock tough to to make an out turn draw through that port by the time you're by the corner guard be really tough to get by the tight blue one so looking at perhaps trying to tap it in you want to keep the shooter close to right there though if you roll too far with the shooter you'll actually create you'll open up a draw path for a fiber they're gonna have to go hard to get this by the long center guard and it's gonna just rub the Seikert staying with it and they'll spin it into the side of the 12 foot important because that could be the rock that prevents a blank Brink looking at two shots. They've got the tap attempt on their own. Stone that was just delivered, or they could come around the corner. Opting for the tap. This might be one of those ones where you ask for the input from the other end, and uh, Dustin just threw this shot, so knows what he needs to do to adjust the weight here. had to add some weight maybe added a little too much does tap it in for shot rock but on quite the angle and a shooter into the rings as well but it sits third shot Sean Meacham wants to play the come around you do have the short little runner but you can just barely see all of the blue stone and if you roll it out, he's got a shot at the uh, stone on the side of 12 foot to still sit to. If you can make the come around, there's four guards protecting you. That stone at the top of that stone biting the top of the eight foot is still essentially just a guard if you make this shot. So they settled on the draw. Steve Laycock already leading by two here. We're going to skip stones. Good draw here could make it very hard for Tyler Clybrink to get more than a single. It might even allow Laycock a chance to steal. staying close to this you know it's going to move hard at the end they haven't laid a, a brush to it yet is this going to be just a little bit too deep don't want to be back in the t-line at all here and it will come to rest full back eight it is shot rock but did it come back far enough to leave a double off that outside one you can't see it a lot of air on the inside of that open blue stone on the side but you know these will finish even with weight and probably worth the risk for the Clybrink team here if you can make the double you're sitting three the double if you're playing this just hitting and rolling over towards that stone you just need a pocket and Steve Laycock will play the, the same draw he just threw and 
he's anywhere in front of the two stones, you're in trouble. This is not going to get by the front one. Now it does take away the draw that Steve just threw. And definitely that blue stone is open now. There's a double available right now. If, if Steve didn't throw, there's a double there for, for three. So Steve's going to make a play on the open red stone. And there's a chance he could roll right over to the top of the button with this stone as well. Make a good roll here, and uh, Connor Clybrink might have nothing left but the angle running on that one red stone you see out in front of the rings that's not overlapped on anything. This, if Steve Laycock can roll this shooter into the top of the forefoot anywhere, that angle run is probably the only shot you've even got to score. Chris Heigert on the brush right away. Gonna make the hit, looks like he's gonna be a little bit thin. Comes across, actually catches his own stone, nudges it a little bit. Now, who shot Rock? I think it might still be the blue at the back of the eight foot. Clybrink, first indication was to play the long angle run. The double is still there. question of which one you feel more comfortable with. He wants to try to score two, so those are the two shots he's looking at. Split might be there. That's what they're looking at now. The problem is your, your shooter's going away from the center line, so it's going to get into the skinnier part of the rings, and it looks like you need to be full eight foot. thought he might still play the double because it is the same shot he just played, although he probably would like to play it from the other turn. He's looking at it now. That is a long angle run back when you have to dead stick it. Stone that he'd have to hit first. There's a good look at it from the overhead view now. You can see it. It's a thin double. Probably about an eighth of a rock. They're looking at the split as well. Actually, it, it may have hurt their chances with this double a little bit that Steve pushed that stone back a little bit. He's, he's made this into a very thin double by pushing it back that little bit. With that broom, it looks like they're playing it with the out turn again. thought they might opt for the in just because you get that little bit steeper roll with the uh, coming into the stone and... And it is a very thin double now. On the brush early, now back and forth. He's got to be close. Makes contact with the first. Catches the back end of the second. Now, will it stop in time? And no. It will slide just through the back of the rings. That was within a whisker of picking up two points. As it is, it'll just be a single point here for Kyler Clybrink in the seventh end. Steve Laycock will take a one-point lead and last rock into the eighth end of play. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? 
you can get a grant to help. We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. It's easy. Sastel has already given away tens of thousands of dollars. There have been lots of great ideas, including kids giving cookies to others, a group set up to welcome newcomers to their school, random acts of kindness, and so much more. The ideas and opportunities are endless. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? Sastel can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Eighth in, just about underway here. So the first stone thrown through. Pardon me. First stone is the guard attempt here by the, the Clyburn team. So. I keep wanting to call him Evan because on my roster, the lead for the team, Evan Van Amsterdam, he's not here. So Chris Kennedy listed as the second. He throws the first three stones of the end. Puts up the center guard. The only problem with that center guard is right in about halfway. And the, the problem with putting it there is that it's now tough to throw the second center guard and get separation. Talk asking Braden Stewart to come around that. Maybe just nibble the top of the forefoot. Doesn't want to be too deep here. Boy, when it's coming back behind the tee line, you may as well just sweep that to the back 12. So another chance now for Chris Kennedy. Clyburn team needing to set up a steal of one here to, to get to an extra end. Of course, in the five rock free guard zone, it's not impossible to steal two. In fact, we saw the Clyburn team do exactly that in the fourth end to jump out to a lead. Well-placed second guard. chance for Braden Stewart to come around. A little deep on his first attempt. And even that one, and yes, it's at the T-liner, mostly above it, but that's still probably a little deeper than they would have liked to have been. It, it allows the Clybrick force him a chance to come down, sit on the corner of that stone behind two guards. If he's not shot rock on the corner of it, he'd, he'd be close. Certainly wouldn't have to nudge it very far to, to sit shot rock. Got a nice line coming into the house. It's got the weight for the nudge. And does push it to the back forefoot. Shooter stays right there, sitting shot rock on the corner of the button, mostly behind cover. Steve Laycock now can start making peel attempts on the guards. We have seen uh, Chris Eichert clean up a few. He had uh, moved four rocks on, on one attempt, made a double peel and rolled over to the center. Just uh, was just last in perhaps. Looking to move at least two here. 
catches the second guard and enough spin on that stone that it goes all the way out of play. Shooter rolls just off the center line. No time clocks being used here at this event. Uh, really the only thing to discuss here is, is which turn do you like to play this guard? Dustin Geltoff being asked to protect that stone at the top corner of the button. Well, this guard's going to overcurl the back one for sure. Now looking to line up so that at least they've got two guards in a line with the blue. Gives the Laycock team a chance to make a play on shot stone. Probably doesn't care if he gets dead in behind here. Actually, if he stays right there, that's a stone he can use. And if Clybreak ever tried to hit and roll under cover off that stone, he wouldn't be any better than just full eight foot. Doesn't want to leave that stone right there. It's a little bit of a dangerous stone, but uh, I'm a little surprised he's playing with this much weight. You can play this with just back eight. You just need to chisel in behind off that blue stone and push it behind the center or behind the T line. You start to set up a pocket on those three blue stones as well. It's the weight that Dustin threw, but uh, it's not the ice that they gave him. And so it overcurls, goes through the port, and right through the back. You know, they've, they've taken their time to discuss a few things, but that might have been one where they needed to discuss it a little bit more because the broom didn't look like it matched up with the weight that I thought they should be playing there. And, and uh, Dustin certainly threw the weight that I had in mind. The broom looked like it's looking for a firm side of hack. And slides through everything, gives Steve Laycock a chance to make the peel, and he's not going to risk a double peel or he might jam something into the rings. He'll just peel one guard. That's all he needs to do to get rid of the overlap. That one guard that's left there is just protecting a bit of the corner of the forefoot anyway. Looks like they're trying the same thing. Might be looking for a little bit more weight now. If he's going to try to roll behind cover, he's got to roll just a little bit farther. Wait, doesn't get the roll behind cover, but does move the blues around to the back of the house. Still Steve Laycock just a chance to play a, a nose hit on that. Yes, a nose hit will, will jam the back one, but the back one's not going to hurt you. You'd like to leave your shooter here in a good spot. Should still be sitting three. It really doesn't matter whether you score one or even a blank at this point in time would, would work for Steve. He just wants a, a stone where he can use it, and it takes away all the paths that uh, work for the Clybring foursome. Sean Meacham. This final stone here in the eighth end. They were on this one right away. 
doesn't want to get to the inside and maybe jam this on the two blues on the side. Jams it on one, brings it across, kills two blues. So gets rid of a little bit of the backing. But does leave Fibrink a chance to try to come around the guard now. So we look to come around close to the T line here. I don't think you're too worried that Steve Laycock's going to try to draw. The key is to get this buried for shot rock. Deadbury for shot, you expect that Steve Lakehawk will probably peel the guard. If you don't get shot rock, he might draw. And you didn't get shot rock. It is the Lakehawk stone sitting at the back eight foot that's shot rock right now. So Steve Laycock will draw. There's a couple of things you get out of this. If you put this in a good spot, it makes it real hard for Clybrink to get in, in anywhere. And even if he does, you've just practiced the draw that you're going to throw with your last one. Clybrink absolutely had to get that in for Shot Rock. Steve Laycock, always been a good drawer. One up here as we play the eighth end. He's got last rock. Throwing the out turn draw, doesn't really need to dead bury this, but if he gets a sliver underneath it, it makes it tough for Clybrink. And again, this is likely to be the same shot that uh, if Steve has to throw his last one, this is his shot for the win. So. He gets a, a free chance to practice it here. Boy, how's that for practice? You may not, you may not have to throw the last one, or if you do, it might be an open hit. Clybrink is going to have to try to make a shot to, to move that blue stone. It's just, how far do you move it? Do you try to move it just to the back eight foot and leave it where it, it might be a, a stone that could be jammed on? If you play, he's looking at the possibility of a, of a whisker thin double. Even just to hit and roll over in front of that other blue stone is an option. Chris Kennedy wondering, can we get by the guard on the intern side, play the red onto the blue? That might be there. If that one's there, it, it, it's the only way that you probably can stay buried. Yep. Albeit, you'll only have a thin sliver of the forefoot. seem to think it's their best shot. I think they're probably right. 
we have seen them play this shot, uh, this wide intern coming around to move rocks. Now, they haven't always had great success, but the fact that you've had a chance to play this a few times gives you a chance to read the spot, so they've got an idea what this is going to do. Probably needs to get to about half of his own stone. Can jam it onto the blue and leave the red in behind cover. Steve Blakehawk would be forced to play that same draw. And by the guard looking for some extra curl now. This is going to be close. Makes the tap and does. Drive it by the blue stone at the back and hangs the raised stone in behind cover for Shot Rock. Really the best Kyler Clybrink could do right there. And Steve Laycock always knew he was going to have this same draw that he made on his first one. Just needs a good piece of the forefoot here and he'll pick up the victory. Made this shot on his first one, and that's not just key for the uh, for the throwers, especially this early part of the season. The, it's nice for the brushers to get a look at the draw weight down this path, so they've got an idea as well. Both brushers picking it up fairly early. Chris Eichert backing away now. Braden Stewart has never left this stone, though. Boy, they're going to have to go, not just for the weight. It's uh, really curling towards that red stone. And I don't know if he's got the distance. And it will come up short. It's going to be a steal of one for Kyler Clybrink. And we're going to have some bonus action. Extra end coming up in this draw six live from the Curling Stadium, Martinsville International. SASTEL Be Kind Online wants to stop cyberbullying. Want in on the action? You can get a grant to help. We award up to $1,000 for youth initiatives that help spread kindness and prevent bullying. It's easy. SASTEL has already given away tens of thousands of dollars. There have been lots of great ideas, including kids giving cookies to others, a group set up to welcome newcomers to their school, random acts of kindness, and so much more. The ideas and opportunities are endless. What great idea do you have to help stop bullying? SASTEL can help. Go to BeKindOnline.com and apply for a grant today. Together, we can make a difference. Well, extra end to action here on Friday night from Martinsville. Draw number six on the men's side. Steve Laycock, Kyler Clybrink all tied up after nine in or after eight ends, playing the ninth. It's Clybrink's team getting us underway. Chris Kennedy throwing the first three stones for the shorthanded Clybrink squad, being asked here to throw the center guard. Always a little bit of debate from teams. Do you throw the, 
the long guard first. You throw the tight one first. Looks like they opted to try to throw it a little bit higher. And in September, when you've only got one sweeper, that's a little scary. So Clybrink came out to, to help with the brush on that one. Braden Stewart now being asked to play the come around. This stone comes towards the rings. I can let you know there were uh, two other games on the women's side tonight. Jennifer Jones defeating Ashley Howard. And it was Yunji Kim from Korea over Brett Barber. And I believe that's the, the Koreans team. I think that leaves them now 3-0 and and in good shape to make the playoffs on the women's side. On the men's side, the other game, Mike McEwen against Yanagasawa from Japan. McEwen with a 3-2 lead there as they play the eighth, and it is the Japanese team with last rock. Chris Kennedy looking for the tighter center guard now. This one's going to slip into the rings. And out far enough into the open that uh, Steve Laycock might be able to make a play on that now. Call for bumper weight here. Of course, if you ever tried to just blast it out and caught it thin, you could drive it right onto your own and leave it in behind cover. So, when you use weight they can control to make more of a precise hit, probably means he's got to keep his shooter in play. Sean Meacham has been skipping for a few years, does a great job sweeping on that one to get it by the front one. And Makes the hit, now does roll for a little bit of a... Uh, he's got a piece of that undercover, but really that acts as a second guard and they're overlapped a little bit. Chris Kennedy will look to bring another tight guard here. He'd like to bury this on the longer guard so that Steve Laycock can't make any kind of attempt at a double peel. You could even corner freeze that blue and you'd be okay. That's what they do. And yes, that rocks in the 12 foot, but again, on this ice, you could bury around that. That's still a guard. And by getting it into the 12 foot like that, he's got as much separation between the two red ones as he could possibly get. No thought of a double peel here. Sykert's just being asked to peel the longer center guard. Dustin Kaltoff now will look to replace that guard. That's farther over than you want it. I think you want to deadline up the two red ones here. Just make him peel this long guard a few more times. You can either play a straight come around or uh, hit and roll off the blue stone behind those two staggered stones anytime you like. Just don't give uh, Steve a chance to play anything on the, the staggered two at the top of the 12 foot. Boy, great job on the brush there. They've got nice and high, and it's dead lined up. Again, too much separation to think about any kind of a double peel. Chris Heikert will just look to peel the long center. Yep. I expect you'll see uh, Clybrink probably throw two more center guards at least. looking at making the play into the rings now. I, 
you're just giving Steve Laycock way too much time to clean everything up. And they opt for the guard. This one's got a lot of line yet. Looking for some extra curl here. Wants to get across that center line. It's a little tighter together than they would have liked, but perfect line. Sean Meacham now will look to just make the straight peel on the longer red guard. Big weight makes the hit, rolls the shooter out of play. Fabric again thinking that he wants to make a play into the rings. I, I, I really think this is too early. You come into the rings now and Steve Laycock still got three, three rocks to, well, two rocks to try to clean it up and then his last rock to win. First indication I thought was he was looking to play the freeze on the blue. Now, talking about can they make the straight draw in there, and I, I think it's there. Just not sure you play it this early. Dustin Kaltoff. Looking to draw, and I think this call they settled on was to, to straight draw. You might chisel off the blue if you had to. Try to get in behind the, the staggered red blue for shot rock. Well, he's made an outstanding shot. Did the best he could with that. I think you'll see Steve Laycock just blast the two at the top. Well, he's looking at whether or not he can hit the, enough of the blue to drive it onto the red. There's probably no hole between the red and the blue. If he drives it in, even into the pocket, he'll get rid of the red shot stone and could deal with that overlap that way too. Boy, if you were really greedy here, Steve, Steve Laycock, you, you make this run into the pocket, you might even leave the shooter at the top of the forefoot and block the path in behind the one guard that'll be left. Sean Meacham's not going to be light here, you know that. Throws the big weight as well as anybody. Looking to hit as much of this blue stone as he can. Might be a little bit on the thin side. Catches the two in the rings, but the shooter squirts through all the way out the back. Still not a bad result. Leaves just the one red stone in the 12 foot. Clyde Brink looking at the draw, and the question now is how deep do you want to come with this? Could throw it as a guard here. I think that might be what the call was. Throw the guard. You know that uh, Steve Laycock probably going to peel it. Although Steve is such a good drawer, if 
If you put him in a situation where he knows he's going to have to draw with his last one, he might just do it to you on his first one. Looks like they're playing the guard all the way on this first one. They expect Steve probably to try to peel it, and then they'll come around that stone top 12 with their last one. Needs to protect that stone in the top 12, though. This is going to be a long guard. If you, uh, well, it's going to be an extremely long guard. Doesn't get it over the hog line. And gives Steve Lakehog a chance to make a hit on that stone. The question is, do you... Do you blast it and roll all the way out or do you want to hold your shooter on the corner because that could be the difference with your last one you may just have to hit and be able to roll out if you hang this one on the corner somewhere Like I've been saying, they won their opening game. They played last night. They lost their opening game, actually. And it is, uh, Highbrink is 1-1. One one. So a chance for Laycock here to move to 1-1. One one. Looks like they're trying to hang this one on the corner somewhere. Rolls over to the edge of the 12. Still protecting a little bit of the, uh, maybe a sliver of the edge of the forefoot. That's the only rock Kyler Clybrink's got to work with, so he's going to try to come around it. bit of a struggle here for the Clybrink team today. He needs a big draw with his last one to force Steve Laycock to make something. Looks like he's got a nice line coming in if they can get it far enough. Oh, and maybe just that little bit light. He rubs off the blue stone and that'll be enough to leave the shooter out in the open. Boy, he just need maybe a foot and a half, two feet more weight out of his hand. He gets by and he'd be sitting buried. As it is, Steve Laycock just needs to make a hit on this stone. He can afford to roll out. He's got that stone at the front of the 12 foot would be the one that he needs to win. This could be a, a game that the Clybrink team, uh, a day that the Clybrink team would like to forget. Here in Martinsville, two losses. They went from a win in their first game to two and now their backs are against the wall with their last two preliminary round games 10 teams in the field here the top five make the playoffs you got to think three and two maybe has a chance at something you can't afford any more losses we want to thank everyone for joining us here on friday night we've got continuing preliminary round action on saturday and sunday and the playoff championship round will all occur on labor day monday i hope you join us for it all my name's Sean Joyce. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we'll see you tomorrow.